Thank you, uh, Steve. Okay. Um, thank you, Steve. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to Baltimore. We're very thrilled to have Sages in our home city here, and um, glad that yesterday we had some nice weather for you. Today, not so nice, but there are so many things to do here. Try and take advantage of it. And uh, if you find you have some free time, come on, come on over to Hopkins and take a look around. Um, you'll have to excuse my voice. I've been trying to die from the flu for the last week. It doesn't seem to be getting any better, but um, hopefully it won't give out during the talk. So I've been asked to see if uh, I can convince you that robotic TME is really better. And I think what that implies is that robotic TME is a uh, technique. Um, I have no disclosures. Um, you know, robotic uh, surgery has had a rapid up upswing uh, uh, since uh, the mid 2000s, and uh, most of this has been seen with the uro uro urologists and uh, gynecologists. And now, uh, over the last, I'd say, five years, there's been an increase in use amongst colorectal surgeons. And I think, you know. When we look at the robot, people are very passionate on whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. And I think a lot of that has to do with whether we look at it as being a technique or a tool. I don't actually feel that it's a new technique. I think it's a sophisticated new tool that may be helpful for doing some things in the pelvis. Um, but when we look at it, it, it makes a big difference. If it's a tool, do we need to be credentialed for it? Do you need to get informed consent from your patients when you're first starting to do it? Is there a training level that goes along with it or is there a, a learning curve? Um, I think that the, the robot is a helpful tool much like the robot was in Lost in Space. There are people that, that think that, does anybody know what these robots are? There you go, Daleks. Big Doctor Who fans. These are evil robots. They are constantly trying to exterminate the human race. Um, and so many people feel that the robots are, uh, are, not, are not helpful. They don't necessarily add to things. Um, that as a technique, it really is not popularized. But we have to, when we look at it, we look at, we're really looking at robotic surgery versus laparoscopic rectal cancer surgery versus open rectal cancer surgery. And the question is, do we have to show that it's better than laparoscopic surgery? Um, does it have to be easier? Um, is it easier or is it evil? So, you know, why are the urologists, why has the robot taken off so rapidly in urology? And a lot of that is because they work in a very small confined space that makes laparoscopic surgery difficult. Um, they work in one quadrant, so when they use the robot, they only have to dock and undock once. They don't really have to move the patient back and forth. Um, and uh, because of the suturing that they do, it does require very re refined suturing skills, and so laparoscopic prostatectomy is a very difficult thing, whereas the robotic, uh, the enhancement of the robot has helped um, make that a more viable technique for the urologist. So where, what is the, inco the incompatibility between uh, robotic procedures and colorectal surgeries. Well, part of the problem is we work in multiple quadrants. Depending on what procedure we're doing, certainly for a robotic proctectomy, you're going to be working in the left upper quadrant, the left lower quadrant, and in the pelvis. So does this require you change uh, positions with the patient several times? And if you change positions, you have to dock and undock the robot. And um, this can significantly increase your OR time. Similarly, um, intra and extracorporeal anastomoses, um, if we have to make an incision to re remove a specimen and, and uh, do an anastomosis, does that change how the robot would affect what we're doing? So when I first started using the robot, I felt that the best place to use it would really be in the rec rectum. Um, using the uh, tools for the pelvis, it, it, uh, any kind of proctectomy that's done laparoscopically, depending on the patient's body habitus and the size of the pelvis, can be challenging. The angle of the sacrum, narrow pelvis, especially if you have a large bulky tumor with a bulky mesorectum, it can be difficult uh, to gain the torque that you need to gain to open up the planes with our current laparoscopic instruments and get adequate retraction. So can the robot help with these patients? Well, 
I mean, I think that it can, and some of the reasons to use a robot is that they do have excellent optics. There are these 3D optics that are superb. Um, decreased surgeon fatigue. I know that after doing a laparoscopic proctectomy, standing there with my hands uh, on my head after four hours with a second year resident, I'm re first of all, ready to, go shoot, ready to go shoot myself in the head. But secondly, um, it certainly does take a lot out of your back. And when you're doing a robotic procedure, you're sitting at the console, it's still stressful, but uh, it's much less body fatigue. The other nice thing is that you gain three graspers that you're in control of plus the camera. So the surgeon's really controlling the camera and three retractors, which helps, again, open up planes in the pelvis. There are articulated instruments were allowed, which allow for dissection. Um, you have better ergonomics and um, the surgeon operates as if they're standing on the, at the patient's head of the bed and has equal access to bo both sides. I think one of the, the big things is that the robot can generate great force and torque, which can open up the planes in patients with have, who have bulky mesorectums who are uh, uh, a little bit bigger if they're obese. It, it helps open up these planes. So why not use a robot? Well, these same torques and forces without tens ten tensile feedback can allow you to torque your way into the mesorectum, you can torque your way into the intestinal wall, and you can talk your way, torque your way into the internal iliac vessels. Um, there's certainly increased cost, and that's one of the main uh, concerns I think many people look at when looking at the robot, and it requires increased training for the OR staff and having to know how to use and manipulate the robotic instruments. I still uh, personally perform a hybrid, a hybrid procedure. I think that there are several different ways of doing it, which, which we'll talk about, but I do use a laparoscope to do the uh, colonic mobilization and then the rectum to do the rectal mobilization. It allows for one docking um, and gives you the best of both worlds, I think. So when we set the patient up, we had set it up just the same way you would for a, robot, a laparoscopic uh, colectomy or uh, proctectomy. Um, both arms need to be tucked and the patient needs to be secured to the table. And this is how we place our ports. The one big difference is that we have a uh, paramedian port. Generally speaking, your camera port is not placed in the midline, it's placed an angle off, usually on the right side. And the key to these robotic ports is that they have to be at least 10 centimeters apart, and the farther apart that they are, the, the better. And so this is just one of several different variations you can do. Um, for for the robotic procedures. Oh, excuse me. So this is what uh, one of the port placements look like uh, in a patient that we uh, that we did. The patient's in Steep Trendelenburg, and we're about to dock the robot. These are just some of the instruments. In addition to these instruments, you have the ability to use bipolar. Um, um, monopolar cautery. We also, there's also now a vessel sealer um, which works on um, uh, electrical energy to seal vessels and has been approved for vessels up to seven millimeters in length. And it hasn't been approved yet, but they're working on a, a articulating stapling device, which would also help. So, <laughs> excuse me, let's look at the evidence. I gotta tell you, there's not much evidence. So this is not gonna be a very long talk. So if you look at the evidence for robotic surgery, this is a case match series of robotic versus laparoscopic colorectal procedures, 106 patients, and there was really no difference in the OR time, the spec specimen length, lymph nodes retrieved, or conversion rates. Um, the length of stay was the same, the return of bowel function was the same, and the complication rates were the same. So these authors determined from their study that robotic-assisted colorectal resections were safe, if you're a pure laparoscopic surgery, you'd look at this study and say there's really no benefit from using the robot at all. This was a study published in DCR in 2008, their first 50 case experience with robotic colon rectal resections. 44 were done for cancer, six were for benign disease, and there was a conversion rate of 4%. The mean OR time was long, five and a half hours, but that decreased in time with uh, between the first 20 and last 30 cases. I think some of the best data still um, to this day uh, has been published by Alessio Pagazzi, who was uh, with Julio at Save Hope and now is in uh, Los Angeles. Um, he, uh, 
He, uh, he has published just retrospective reviews on his um, outcomes with uh, patients uh, that had robotic procedures for rectal cancer. This is, uh, he published on 30, 39 patients here that underwent robotic proctectomies. These were all low and mid-rectal tumors. T4 tumors were excluded. 22 were low interior resections, 11 were intersphincteric dissections with hand sewn colonial anastomoses, and six were APRs. His complications, he had a 12% morbidity rate, a 12% leak rate. His operative time was on average 285 minutes, and his conversion rate was 2.6%. They stayed in hospital for four days. When you looked at his cancer um, variables, they all had negative circumferential margins, and a median of 13 lymph nodes were removed. And when this was published, at 13 months, they had no local recurrences. They did a follow-up study three years with three-year follow-up now on 64 patients. OR time hadn't changed rate. The conversion rate had gone up to 10% almost. Anastomotic leak rate was 7%. Median lymph node retrieval was 14 with a distal margin of 3.4 centimeters, and all circumferential margins were negative. Local recurrence rate was 3% overall recurrence was 9% and uh, three-year survival was 96% with disease-free survival. I think it should be the other way around of 73%. This was a study that was recently published this past year in surgical endoscopy that reviewed all of the robotic literature for both colon and rectal surgery and you'll see that there were 39 studies and out of these 39 studies these were the procedures that were done. I really find very little role for early ocecal resections in the robot, except for perhaps morbidly obese patients where the omentum is just so difficult to manipulate. Um, there were 220 right colectomies and left colectomies, but the majority of the cases that were done were anterior or low anterior resections with APRs. And I think this is one of the things where we look at the robot and we say, well, where may the benefit be? if we're trying to do minimally invasive surgery for rectal cancer. And I think the benefit may be uh, in our conversion rates. There's certainly nothing that's scientifically proven this, but if you look at our, uh, the conversion rate in this combined conversion rate in the, of these studies and these almost, almost 500 patients that underwent a uh, robotic proctectomy, the conversion rate was 0.4%. If you compare that to some of the conversion rates of the recently published randomized prospective trials, looking at both laparoscopic procedures in the United Kingdom and then in Europe, we find with both the classic and color trial, the conversion rates of 57 and 17 percent. So, you know, in conclusion, I think that, you know, robotic surgery, I really don't think should be viewed as a technique. I think many people do view it as a technique. I think there are credentialing and there's a lot of controversy in this country right now as to how many you have to do, how, how many you need to be proctored to do to do these procedures. Um, I think it's really a tool, and once you learn how to use the tool, the, the technique of the operation is exactly the same as whether you're doing a laparoscopic procedure or as an open procedure. I, I don't think we'll ever be able to show a benefit of a robotic procedure over a laparoscopic procedure. Um, and I think that we'll have to accept that. But I do think that one of the things we may see is a decrease in the conversion rates, especially with more challenging cases. Um, it may certainly decrease surgeon fatigue, and that's something that needs to be looked at. And we need a number, another company to invent another robot so the costs go down. Thank you. <laughs>